Do -do 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 -do. What is a food game changer to you? Um, I, anything that changes your preconceptions. And you've got a vision in your head of how it's going to play out, and then something just completely sideswipes you. And it's normally because of the backstory or the people and the passion behind the food. And everything just is completely different and, yeah, utterly amazes you. Pa pow Cheers. Cheers. Where we are right now is where the cheeseburger was first invented. So not a bad place to eat a cheeseburger, right? Not only that, but the restaurant we're currently in, 8020 at Kalins, is the place where Colonel Sanders first sold his famous fried chicken on that bench right there, here in Louisville. Where, well, sorry? Louisville's here, it's in Kentucky, in the United States of America. And we've been sent by Visit the USA to find out about the food here. Louisville, is that how you say it? That's how I say it. That's not how you say it. How else would it be said? Louisville. And what do we know about the food here? There's probably a few obvious ones. They fry chicken. Grits. Bourbon. Burgers. Pizzas. While they do that stuff really well here, there's a whole other side to this place, and these guys have no idea what they're about to experience. Oh. Yes. I'm Mike, and I do know what they're about to experience because I flew out a week ago, and I planned the whole thing based off of what the locals recommended me, and it is going to be good. Because if you just Google a city and go to the same five places and eat the stereotypical food that everyone goes to and eats, you're never going to find a game changer. I thought it was a good idea to get the guys to research some places to go a couple of weeks before we left to increase our chances of finding something exceptional. And you know what they did? Well, how else do you expect me to find anything on the internet, Instagram? A lot of Googling and looking at lists. Thrillist, it was on Eater. So they needed to be taught a lesson. First up, an hour after landing, Barry's choice. It's very Instagram friendly. So these pieces have been voted the best in town. Um, in honesty, I searched the hashtag of best food in town. That is some lazy research. And so that Barry learns his lesson, we're going to eat his food in front of him and not let him have any. And that was him just finding this out. Right. Why, would, no, why would you do that? Because you need to learn your lesson. <laughs> okay, off camera. I can eat pizza though, yeah? No. <laughs> Come on, Baz. It's like a crispy flatbread with toppings. <laughs> he just and described a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> They're cream-based pizzas. It's garlicky, it's delicious. <laughs> wow. Considering pepperoni is like a cured meat, it tastes really fresh. It's better, man. It's just really spicy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the spice! <laughs> this just hits all of the spots that you want. I've had a really good evening. Have you had a good evening? Uh oh. Have you had a good evening? Are you serious? What'd you Three get? Of Hooters. What's <laughs> <laughs> on? Because I had lots of pizza. The following day, we headed towards downtown Louisville. I was told by the locals it was nicknamed Mini Manhattan because of the care and attention given to the aesthetics and the architecture. And it was a really good looking town. And it was here that we would enjoy Ben's choice, the iconic hot brown at the Brown Hotel. It used to draw in like 1,200 people every night for dinner and dance. And people would dance the night away and at the end of the night would be hungry. And in the early hours of the morning would want something to eat. The way it's cooked is dry heat and partially steamed, back and forth, back and forth. This is an iconic meal that everybody who travels from around the world, such as yourselves, uh, come to get. So my theory is if you come to Louisville, this is like one of the top three or five things you must do, and therefore it is a bit of a cliche. And having seen the situation last night, I hope I get to try it. We discussed if Ben could eat here for about two seconds. It's like Thrillist, it was on Eater. Sorry, Ben. Oh, mummy. Oh, man. I has the juiciest turkey I've ever eaten. Mm. 
If I were a chef, I would want to eat this masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, mate? Oh, the only ounce of pleasure I can take in this is that we're now going to Jamie's place and he's really going to suffer. And Jamie's place was located about 10 minutes away from downtown in an area called the Highlands, which is a really cool hub of independent restaurants and also shops based in converted Victorian houses. From my research, I found a place called Grail House. It's a bed and breakfast, or a beverage and breakfast, I think they call it. And how on earth did you find the Grail House, Jay? Googled it. This game is stupid. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That is the finest biscuits and gravy I think I've ever had. Jay, creamy grits with the egg yolk just to enrich it and the spice of that sausage, the ras hanouk. And tell me, does the, the sweetness of the maple syrup really balance out the meatiness of the duck? Yeah, and the black pepper of the biscuit. Yeah, the food scene in Louisville is great. It's kind of a tight-knit scene. A lot, of, uh, a lot of the chefs here in town have all worked together over the years. Everybody's kind of friends and we all eat at each other's restaurants and when you see somebody do something really great, you know, you 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 want to do something you know even better to kind of outdo them you know there, there's like a friendly competition with a lot of the independent restaurants for sure so now the guy's personal choices were ticked off we'd now embark on an itinerary put together entirely by the locals i'd met the week before and i had no idea what to expect now either the menu speaks to me on levels that i find hard to describe that is a morning pastry to make a detour for i get to eat biscuits and gravy now i'm excited Wow. Chicken mayonnaise and candied pecans. It's a combination I would just not even think of putting together. That is amazing. He's asked us to bring like a jacket or a jumper thing, which makes no sense in Louisville because it's about 32 degrees. We thought we'd take you to Mega Cavern, which is a 17 mile underground cave system that goes underneath Louisville by zip line. Oh my god! Yeah! <laughs> that is the laugh of a nervous man. The Mega Cavern is a former limestone mine 100 feet underneath Louisville. The cave stretches under parts of the Louisville Zoo and, due to its support structures, is classified as a building and is therefore the largest building in Kentucky. Three out of four of us were going to enjoy ourselves. I'm not great with heights, okay. if I'm honest. Mate, it's not that high. Put me on good and proper. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How you feeling, mate? Yep. <laughs> Good to go. Yeah, okay. yeah you sure? <laughs> Easy does it. Easy does it. Oh, these are slippery shoes. Oh, good. Keep walking. 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 Did you enjoy that? I enjoyed parts of it. Like the end bit. <laughs> so eighty twenty is the uh Ratio of lean to fat in beef. I would assume you probably know that. I was hoping that's what it was. So, was so it's kind of just a, a nod to that, and um, um, it's also what Kalen's originally only used. It was all 80 20 ground beef. And this is where we came in. So, what does a cheeseburger from the birthplace of the cheeseburger? taste like. A pretzel bun I mean such a big difference from the really juicy meat, the sauce, the egg, with the little pop up. Oh, you can get a bit of egg, how'd you get a bit of egg? You can see here, this is like the caramelization and the jamminess of the onion, so it's almost like 
it's like a chutney almost that it leaves across the burger. If you eat a burger and you haven't got dirty hands afterwards, have you really eaten a burger? I've got half a burger. I like to cut my burgers in half so I don't get dirty hands. <laughs> Like with all good burgers you trust, medium in the middle, still a little bit pink. This is ground in house and it is meaty. You know me, I love a story, I love history, I love legacy, but when the food matches and pairs with that, that's something to write home about. There's a reoccurring theme in Louisville, it's that everything is local, in season, delicious, and the chefs in the kitchen really, really care about putting their food together. That was not what I expected whatsoever. I think the biggest thing for me was the passion behind the people working, whether it was front of house or in the kitchen, on how they're combining local produce into really cool, tasty, innovative things that are perhaps a take on some classics. As a day goes, it doesn't get much better than that. For food and people and places to be, it's bang on the money. They have no idea what you guys have planned for them to do tomorrow.